Well, this one's gonna be called Bob Bean Bob, Stock Investing Tips for the Single Mom. Don't take the title the wrong way again. Um, I think you know what I mean. Uh, a few things before I get started. Investing in both domestic and international stocks and bonds is very risky. And there's a risk of losing all of your capital. So do not spend money in the stock market or the bond market unless you're willing to lose that money. Um, generally that doesn't happen, you don't lose all of your money, but it's risky business. So I just want you to be, know that this is that you're getting to something if you invest in stocks, bonds, and even mutual funds, it can be risky. So some of the tips I'm gonna provide here hopefully will help you and guide you through um, how to manage your finances if it involves stocks and bonds. Um, my last cut was 21 and a half minutes, so I'm going to really try to shorten this up. Um, I sell stock, my disclaimer, I sell, I sell stock research, institutional stock research to portfolio managers at hedge funds and mutual funds. I don't currently own any stocks because I feel like it's a distraction. We're also very, very highly, highly uh, compliance, uh, a highly compliant organization and even if I wanted to own stocks, there's very few stocks that I could own. And if I do own them and we, we say something or publish something in, in them, I have to sell them immediately. So it makes it more it makes it difficult to own stocks in my line of work. And I think I used to do it earlier on at another company, and it's just a real big distraction, so I don't do it anymore. But this show is for entertainment only. Any decisions you make are your own. And again, trading in stocks and investing in stocks can be very risky business. Hopefully after the few tips that I give, it'll help you to mitigate some of the risk. My background, I started as a specialist clerk on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, a wonderful place to start. Uh, from there, I took a job as a block trader for Merrill Lynch and spent the next seven or eight years there. Then I moved to another smaller boutique firm where I was uh, a sales trader where at Merrill Lynch I did just the trading. At this next firm, I did the, for three and a half years, I generated the trade and I actually traded the trade, which is really interesting. Gave me a little bit of a, 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 a taste of the selling side of Wall Street. And now, and for the last eight years or so, I have exclusively sold uh, research into uh, institutions. But if you need my help, just pay me after this and I'll help you rebalance your 401k or point you in the right direction or give you the right periodicals to read or help you in any way that I can. I'm not gonna pick the stops for you though. And I'm not going to mention any individual stocks here either, just to be safe. I don't want to get myself in trouble. I don't want to get for anybody else to, to get in any sort of trouble. So I'm just going to give some guide, some real quick guidelines. Go with what you know when you're investing in stocks and bonds. I would highly recommend that you do not invest in an oil and gas exploration company if you have no knowledge of that of that business or in real estate investment trusts, REITs we call them, because or airlines, all of these are very, very uh, complex and complicated areas and you need a certain level of expertise to be able to successfully invest in those areas. So go with what you know. You go to the store, you have a product that you like that's far and above and beyond all the other products that you use in that category. Find out who the company is, see if they're a public company, and maybe invest in their stock or at least uh, do your homework, do some research, find out if it, if, if it really is that good a company that's producing a product that's so far above me on the others. Now, there's several products that I use that are like that. I won't mention the name brand, I'm not going to show it, but I have a Band-Aid. I, I lost a nail, um, my thumbnail, playing paintball, which I like to do quite often. And the regular Band-Aids, they don't, they stay on for 20 minutes. Your thumb, you use it a lot. I've been doing paintings, it, it comes off in 15, 10, 15 minutes. I got fabric band-aids, they're above and beyond anything else I've ever used. They stay on for a full day, they stay on the water, and those are the types of things. I would, I know the company, and I, I would probably buy this company, but uh, that's what I mean when I say go with what you know. Warren Buffett, very, very famous investor. His wife came home with those uh, eggs that have the pantyhose in them. They were uh, displayed in the front of the store, and he thought that that was really unique and interesting. And he bought Hanes. He said, well, he is the owner of Hanes ever since then. His wife came home, showed him something. It, it was an extraordinary idea at the time, and I agree. And he bought it. He's made quite a bit of money in that investment. So go with my, what, you, what you know. Do your own work. There's several resources online on the internet now. You can find out everything, anything and everything you want to know with just a quick trip to the internet. Some good places for financial information, Yahoo Finance. Uh, Bloomberg.com for international stocks. That's my dog. That's um, CNBC, 
most financial professionals that I work with, we have a TV on our desk and we watch CNBC all day long. Really good place for insight on different stocks, sectors. Um, there are shows for every level of investor, and that's a, that's a really good place. Watch that, and it'll give you a better idea of how the markets operate. Um, in other words, do your homework. You know, if, you, if you're interested in a stock, go read the last two months of news. That's a good start. And you will find out an awful lot about a company by reading just the news and just their press releases. Look at their earnings, you know, dig in. And I'm sure you'll be able to come up with some really good ideas. Uh, there's two things that, that hurt people when it comes to investing. Fear and greed, the two major things. I'll give you a couple of examples. Fear being you buy a stock at $10 a share. It goes to $5, you've lost half of your money. Instead of disgorging or getting rid of a losing position, selling the stock and taking your loss and moving on, people think that they're, they're gonna lose all their money and they buy more. They buy more of a bad investment and it keeps going down. And then they buy more and it becomes a terrible situation. If you buy a stock that you thought was gonna go up and it goes down a lot, sell it and move on. You'll, you'll be the most productive and have the best returns in your portfolio if you do this. Greed, the number one killer of profits. You buy a stock at five, or buy a stock at ten dollars. You say this stock goes up thirty percent or to thirteen dollars. I'm going to sell it. I've heard this so many times, even among professional money managers. It gets to thirteen. What do you do? You get greedy. You say it's at thirteen. I've made this much money. If it goes to fifteen, I'll make a ton more. And then hold it. And what happens? It goes to twelve. Then it goes to eight. Then it goes to six. And then fear sets in, and they buy more of a losing position. And it, I see it happen all the time. So, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but use trading stops and limits. When I make a trade, I go in, stocks at $7 a share, I say buy me 1,000 shares at six. And I leave it there, it's good for 90 days. It's a limit order. And then I say, once this trade gets executed, even before it gets executed, I'll sell 1,000 shares at 13. And I leave it there, that way, I'm driving to work, I'm running a little bit late, the market opens, stock drops a point, boom, I buy my stock. And I was in my car, listening to my Sirius Satellite Radio. And then, on the way home, I gotta leave early for a kid's games, driving home, stock surges up to 13, 14, boom, I sold my shares. And I was talking to my wife on the phone. Had no idea. And that's the best way to invest in individual stocks, that is. Set your price points. Set your, if you think it's gonna go up 30%, well, you can put it out there, and for 90 days, you'll have that order, that we call orders, out there at a set price. Um, this is really important. This is, don't take stock tips from anybody. You'll lose money every time. Do your homework, go with what you know, read the news, investigate the stocks, look at management of the companies. Every time you take a stock tip, I'm telling you, over 90% of the time, stock tips are losers because this person bought this stock at $9 and it went to, let's say like Apple Computer, to 250, 300, they tell you, at 300, and it goes back down to 100. It hasn't done that, but, and I said I wasn't gonna mention individual stocks, but that's just, this is just an example, hypothetical, fictitious. You know, and, and, and then that's what happens. Equally as important, don't give your friends and family stock tips, no matter how much work you've done, no matter how sure you are, because people will tell you, they will they will give you every and any reassurance that they will not hold it against you if they lose money. They will say this over and over, they will convince you, they will, they will hammer you until you give them your best idea. And when they lose money, you lose a friend. I put my friend into a position, he lost a couple hundred thousand dollars to this day, 18 years later, we are no longer friends. You lose someone a couple hundred thousand dollars because you don't know how much they're gonna invest, you lose a friend, you just do. Very few people stand by that. They mean well, but when it comes to the time and they lose that physical money, it's almost a hatred. Uh, it's happened to me more than once and I did not accept the stock tips because my largest loss ever was from my dentist, dentists and doctors are the worst. Sorry, dentists and doctors. Dentists gave me a tip, I put a lot of money into it, and it went to zero. The company went bankrupt, and so I never did that again, but then I was giving stock tips. I've been in the stock market my whole life, I know stocks well. So I know stocks better than any other class of asset. 
and every single time that I gave someone a losing p position, unless they were professional investors who rely on me to do that as a course of my work, but personally, you lose friends, or you have to hear about the losing stock, the crappy stock that you put your family member in for the next 10 Christmases and more. They will never let you live it down, so just don't do it. Stock investing is personal and private, and it's your own business. Don't give tips, don't take tips. A lot of the online uh, trading firms, E-Trade, Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade, or I think they're combined now, um, Scott Trade, um, all of those different uh, platforms you go to online trading have mock trading, where you can trade for a certain specific amount of time without money. You can make trades, you can get familiar with the system, watch stocks go up and down as if you had money at stake when you don't. And you can practice, practice makes perfect. And I love that. I, sometimes I do that too. Go in there because I don't like to invest in stocks. Like I said, it's a distraction. I do have a 401k, but that's it. And there are mutual funds only of money managers that I know through my, through my course of my work. And so do the mock trading. Try it out for three months. See how you do. Get familiar. Uh, go with what you know. Um, do your homework. Um, I can't say that enough. And um, any one of these firms... You can pick up the phone and talk to someone, and they will help you for free. And now, when I used to first make trades, it was $290 to buy 1,000 shares of stock. Today, it's $7. You want to buy 5,000 shares? $7. You want to buy 10,000 shares? $7. You want to buy a million shares? Well, it might be a little bit more for that, but you know what I mean. It's dirt, cheap, almost free, and you get like 50 online trades for free, and that this is stocks only, and mutual funds also. If you're talk, we're talking about a 401k, which is the most that I've helped um, my friends with, pick four things in there. We have probably 20 elections I pick four. I have an international, I have a domestic, I have a, 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 a dividend, and a small cap. Those are the things I like, and they've done quite well. And it's easy to keep track of four. I used to do one, but it was a distraction for my work because I had to watch it so closely. I had all my eggs in one basket. I picked four things for my 401k. You can choose as many as you like, but it's hard for me to keep track of nine or ten investments, especially when I know the money managers. I have to go, you know, it's it's a lot. Pick four or five things in your 401k selection and, and do your homework. Look at them. Look at their prospectuses. Read about the my managers. See how Morningstar rates them. And... Uh, finally, my favorite stocks, I'm not going to give any names, are high quality dividend paying stocks, which means you buy the stock at $10 and it pays you a 3% dividend, either in cash or you get more shares, which you would reinvest, it's called dividend reinvestment. And so even if your investment does absolutely nothing, it's $10 at the end of the year, it's $10, it paid you 3%. You got paid 3%. You made 3%. On the position. Best case scenario is you buy a stock at 10, it goes to 15, you made 50%, and it paid you five, three, four, five percent in, in a dividend income. I love that scenario. That's my personal favorite scenario. Buy a high quality stock that pays dividends. The types of stocks that pay dividends are um, the big food companies, the tobacco companies. Um, some of the tech companies now are starting to pay dividends. You look at when you look at when you pull up the put the, your ticker in or your symbol in Yahoo Finance. You'll see it'll show what the, either the dividend percentage or what it actually is, and so you can decide there. And it really does, especially in a down market. You buy a stock at ten, it goes to eight. It's a twenty percent loss. You get five percent dividend, and the dividend yield. The lower the stock goes, the higher the yield is on the dividend. So um, those are my favorites. A couple books that are really interesting, fun to read, and really gives you an idea of the stock market. The first one's called Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. And I'll put this at the, in the bottom in the caption part of the video when I edit it. And also, in 1998, the largest hedge fund um, called Long Term Capital uh, was manned by several really smart mathematicians, PhDs, and they thought they figured out the secret sauce to the market. And really, really interesting, and, it, and so did many, many others, because billions of dollars poured into this strategy, and uh, long-term capital failed, and almost took down several other countries because they were forced to spend their earnings. They were making a lot of money for a couple of years. They, they, it looked like they cracked the code, and the market did what it always does. It went, moved away from what is normal and regular. It had an anomaly and um, and it, it collapsed. It's a paperback. It's a great read. Really, really a weekend read. 
And again, uh, When Genius Failed is the name of that book and Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. That's it.